Hey guys, Texas 200. Day one, I'm gonna take you bastard sailing. My name is Ziggy, and I'm out tearing up the Texas coast on a Windrider 17. Jump aboard, cuz I'm gonna take you bastard sailing. Hey guys, there I am, Port O'Connor. It's the Clark's Inn, or in at Clark's. Port O'Connor, Texas. Today's Sunday. Nice lazy day. Tomorrow's Monday. Starts at the Texas 200. Two mile, 100 miles up and down the coast for the week. Sleeping on barrier islands and tents and whatever we scrape together. Starting from the north headed south. Most people start from the south headed up. It depends, you know, people do it both ways. So today is a nice lazy day. I get to lounge out, relax, take my time getting the boat ready. So tomorrow I just jump in and roll. So it'll be light air tomorrow. So it's no big hurry getting out of here. In the afternoon it picks up, then I pick where I sleep tomorrow night. But uh, tonight's gonna rock. Headed into town, find myself some dinner. I'll talk to you later. Got some great pizza, brought it back to the room. Drank some beers out on the balcony, enjoyed the stars. Inn at Clark's is like my favorite place to set up and sail out of. It's a lot of fishermen, not many sailors, but it works either way. And uh, you really need to try it out. Just ask for Christy with a K and uh, she'll set you up. Make sure you tell her Ziggy sent you. All right, it's a hot day. About 100 degrees out here. The Inn at Clark's. Port O'Connor, Texas, awesome joint. Relaxable night last night. The wind's flickering around, it just shifted. We're gonna see what we can do here before it shifts again. It's supposed to shift in a couple hours. Kind of leave us floundering and then pick back up. So it's been coming right up in the direction we wanted to go. So I hung out until about noon. And right on forecast, it swung. And uh, we're out of here. Let's go make this thing work. Texas 200, 2020, 21, baby. We have dolphins already. Oh, I feel breeze. That feels better. Now, if you follow my page, you've seen this view before. I love it. Ah, should have got that all straightened out, huh? There we go. I got time. All right, dolphins to launch us off with. How much more can you want from that, huh? So, I got some ice in my water here. It won't last long. Broken umbrella right out of the gate here. Oh, that's not good. Good thing I brought us back up. It's way in the nose, so I'm just gonna have to fake it here. Good thing I brought a spare umbrella. All ready to go. But it's all the way up in the nose, so. I'll, I'll nurse this one for today. Get a few miles down here, we break out into the bay. And then we should get a little more breeze, although it's supposed to be real light, die off here shortly. I don't want to get out in the open water by then. There we go. Four. Four and a half. Well, we're almost into five. I'll take it.
Well, I don't know if that wind direction is going to help us for a jib, but let's try it out. Ah, I'm going to fight you for it, huh? in the shadow of the main cell. Oh, oh yeah, here we go. That helped. We get the gust that helps. Now we're moving. thing up. Oh yeah. Kinda. Sorta. Yeah. It was robbing me of my breeze. I was getting bacon underneath that little umbrella. I'm gonna get the good one out tomorrow. Must have stepped on that one or something, packing the boat. Now I can see. The breeze feels good. We have a record number of uh, people, like 151 people and fish, like around 90, a little over 90 boats on this event. There's only a few of us doing this top end one. The main reason I, I was going to do the whole run from the bottom. I'd, we'll get on a little quicker next year and make work, but uh, with so many people, and a lot of them because they saw it on this YouTube channel and wanted to try it out, but so many people down there just overwhelmed Port Mansfield. It's a small fishing community, and they're just not uh, set up for 100 boats all at once on top of their usual fishing, mountain, fishing vessels for the weekend. So they're just swamped down there, and I couldn't get dockage for a boat this wide. If I was a regular sailboat, I could have got dockage easy, but a 13-foot wide, I called last December, and there was a couple places that had a spot that big enough for me, but I had to rent a 52-foot long dock to get a boat a dock that wide. I figured I'd fill it up with other Texas 200 people. Three weeks later, I called back to reserve it, and they were all gone. So there was nowhere. So there was nowhere to go, you know, reliably. My friend Buddy there, with the boat that Buddy built, him and I were teaming up. He were sailing together, he's bringing his boat down, but he had shoulder surgery last week, he's out. So he didn't make the run. We were gonna Buddy team this thing right on down. Buddy boat it, and uh, Buddy boat with Buddy. But uh, I could have played to the last minute and just tried to find somewhere to stick it and everything, but uh, I decided to go the safe route, run it just like everyone did last year. It gives me a nice comfy room to start from. And we have a tropical storm brewing in the, in the uh, Gulf right now. As, last, as yesterday, it was still it was a 50% chance to become a tropical storm. So this is Monday, Thursday, or Friday and Saturday, the winds are supposed to be wailing straight down this way while we're coming this way. And Saturday, the last day of the race, it's going to be like 20 mile an hour right down the chute. So that's, you know, the time to get on the motor and fight it back. But uh, So I'm not going to go as far south. I was hoping this thing's fast enough. If we had the regular winds that we usually have out here, I'd catch the, I was going to catch the crew on night two coming up and then do the whole run with them. But uh, I'm going to stay. I think because of that storm, I'm going to stay, go down to like Corpus Christi and then uh, turn around and head back from there. A bunch, bunch of the crew will be coming by then. Have some drinking buddies at the campfires, but uh, I'm not gonna get too committed because uh, there's some crazy weather coming in and you don't wanna get stuck out here. These shallow bays, they go nuts and stuff like that. So for safety reasons, as, unless the weather forecast changes, we'll see what happens. 
I, uh, I'm not planning on getting too committed to the south as I was really gung-ho and gonna go go get crazy. Ah, nice little breeze. Let's get back here. Hey, we're running fives. A little over five. It's not bad considering we got like low, no wind. Most of a downwind. Right. Get in here, get set up, get the tent set up on the boat. Maybe get a swim in. It's off of my little uh, camp shower. Look at some dinner and a couple of beers around a campfire. I'm taking you, baby. Couldn't find this place last time. We'll get it this time. Well, I found it. Just didn't know I found it. This time I'll know I found it. Well, there's a storm over there. That rain, it's spreading out. Hell of a uh, cloud formation going there. this sucker. I think we will. If we don't, we get wet. I haven't seen any lightning. Thunder, I heard that. That was thunder. on the water over here. And the storm right here and destination right there and the two are getting closer and closer. Oh, the storm's sucking the air. I need it, come on. over three and a half miles. Oh, we got another storm right dead ahead of us formed up now. Oh, shit. These two join a really good idea. Three and a quarter miles, a little over that. 3.37. Our course is dead nuts into a thunderstorm. <laughs> Come on, baby. You can do it. Of course, last year in the Texas 200, day five and six video, look it up, I'll throw a card right there. Hit a hell of a storm. Scared the hell out of me. 50 mile an hour winds and such. But uh, I don't think these will generate anything like that. Doesn't mean they won't be scary. Oh yeah, it's starting to affect our wind direction. Come oh, on, baby. Give us a little gust here. Alright, five miles an hour. That'll help knock a little time off our run here. Bearing off our course to get this speed. But... 
It's a race now. Oh yeah, they're slowly joining up. Should go just under an hour to go. Unless we can hold this pace a little, uh, even with this pace, we'll still be 45 minutes. Dodging that storm. Two and a half miles that way. We're screaming along, I like this. Destination right there. 2.42 miles that way. We're gonna get up here, we're gonna take a tack. We're gonna shoot it out past. We might have to one more tack to come in. Depends what that storm's doing with the wind in that direction. That's why we had a tack here. The storm's kicking the wind around. The two storms, they gotta be cycling together. Watch the charts and wait for the right time to pull this. Uh oh. Wind's doing a shift on us again. Hope that doesn't come back to haunt us. Let's see. Let's see. I didn't want to tack yet, but everything shifted. The wind, the wind brought us around faster. Actually going to the right side of the storm and our destination is on the left side of the storm. So we're playing chicken. The idea is to be able to tack into our destination before the storm meets us head on. Hell of a thunderhead up there we're coming up under. How are we doing? 2.3 miles to the destination. Sailing at four and a half miles an hour. About 40 minutes. And we're rolling four miles an hour. 1.75, one and three quarter miles that way. Oh, five and a half, we're getting some momentum here. So this is the air we need in a couple of days when it's time to go home. <coughs> Whereas then it's supposed to circle around and fight us then. That's the forecast. I've seen it be wrong before, though. <laughs> well, I started out as a boring day, but pretty interesting here at the end. If I had to have it one way or the other, that'd be it. So I'm landing on a good note. Oh, we're coming up here to the line. May the water get shallower, we have to tack it out again. any mass in there so I'm gonna be the only one in there which I I expected
mile and a half. Oh boy, come on. Let's be the barrier islands here. Kicking around the wind, because if we get up here close, it starts biting just like before. It's like the storms are rolling out to the west there. The south, south, you know, the southwest. We still got that big one up behind me somewhere. Let's see where that goes. Coming up to it. We're gonna have to do attack. ugly one back there. There's a whole, oh, there's a whole line of them in there. You know what? storm gets us so we can get set up. We're just playing right here offshore. Just over a mile in, we can zip that real fast.
Well, I made it to shore. Would you see what's following me in? My first chore was to make sure I had all my anchors out to uh, secure the boat. Next we secure the sails, but the storm hit a lot faster than I thought it would. The whipping lines are hit me so hard I was afraid I might break a bone or lose an eyeball or get hurt so I just finally had to back off. I'd already dislocated a finger that's why I'm holding my hand. Funny, I'm trying to pull that line. After being whipped in the face several times, I realized I just needed to get off the boat and get to safety.
mile an hour wind battery's about dead here, but that was bad. I'm a little banged up. Hurt my hand. I'm settling in now, but now the lightning and the rain starting, so I just gotta hunker down and wait. The boat's so pushed up on shore from the wind, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get it back in the water by myself. I'm gonna at least have to empty it out. I don't know when I'm gonna get a tent up, I'm just gonna have to to deal with it to come. This isn't good. Not good at all. guess a 70 mile an hour winds. As soon as I hit shore, good thing I fired up the motor and got here. Got a break between the rain and got the tent up. I didn't know if I was going to be able to do that. I thought I actually, initially I thought I was going to have to just wear my followers, my rain gear, and just lay here on the beach. Because the wind and the rain and the lightning, I didn't think I was going to be able to get a tent up. Too much lightning to do. think about sleeping on the boat. I did get the boat back down in the water. They take everything out of it and build forever. Get all the water out of it. The waves would come over the side. It took some work. I said I want to do it now versus tomorrow. I thought I was going to do it tomorrow because it'll get dug in even worse. So I got it in the water. I lost the jib. It shredded. Here's the thing if I dislocated. Dislocated my little pinky. Swelling starting to go down. I got it back in. I got the joint back in place. Swelling's going down, but it hurts. Out, it hurts. And uh, so I got a Motrin 800 in here. It's got my name on it. Get the pain to quit. I got uh, something going on with my foot. I hurt my foot. That was pretty fucking death. Fucking, I could have died. Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow I'll get, hopefully get some sunshine. I'll inspect the boat. And unless I get a wild hair, I don't think I have a front sail. I know I don't have a front sail. It's shredded up. It's, but uh, I'll, I'll inspect it again tomorrow. But uh, I think right now my plan is to call it and head back for the uh, trailer. Hopefully the winds is a good direction for that. I don't even know what the wind's doing tomorrow. And uh, although I should have enough gas to motor it if I have to. But uh, it's actually turning into a nice evening out here. Luckily I uh, decided not to tack it all the way in the last mile and a half I fired up the motor because I just, just got in here. And it hit. It hit bad. So, now that everything's settled down, it's not as doom and gloom as I thought. I just thought I was going to be out here. I thought I was going to have to get rescued out. I didn't think I'd be able to the strength to get the boat off the shore because it was right up on shore. That wind blew the boat right up out of the water onto shore. So, I'm starving. I'm going to make some dinner. I'm going to see what's going on. We're missing a nice sunset, it looks like. I got two... <laughs> I got two bundles of firewood. They're all getting burnt tonight unless the weather changes. So I'm going to sit here and have a fire. You'll be with me. Get some port wine and more beers than I can drink in one night. And uh, can make the best of it. And then uh, put together the pieces tomorrow and decide what's happening. Look at the weather. I could literally go down to Panther Point for a night if the boat's in too, not too bad a shape. And then head back the next day. Depends what the weather's doing. And uh, mine flat out thing was I'm done. Now I'm relaxing and, the, and death, death's door is getting farther away. We'll see. But uh, it's been an adventure. <laughs> and we had that bad storm last year. Day five. And that's capsized boats, dismasted boats. That was 50 mile an hour winds. That was nuts. This was worse. This was a lot worse. And uh, so this is luckily I just touched touched land here, and uh, when it was all breaking loose, when it hit, and it was coming up from behind, so I knew it was coming, but I didn't know it was coming that close. And uh, I'd never been here before, so I was concentrating on where I could get into shore. And uh, this is where I got into shore. Just got the anchor up there. Got my picnic anchor in there, just as it all went to hell, and then. I got it down so the boat wouldn't go anywhere, and then the boat followed me right up on shore. But uh, other than that, 
so far so good. I ain't gonna lie, it was scary as hell. Alright, getting some dinner in us. Chili neck. The better choices, but I was too tired to dig deeper than that in the bag. About five more minutes. I'll be eating it ten more minutes. And we'll go see what we can do about a campfire. Some port wine. I'm gonna get in some dry clothes. I do have dry clothes though. And I don't know if I have a dry jacket. Find out how well that Ziploc worked on the boat. I still gotta go out and boat and get it. But uh, my spirits are getting better. Get some food in me, I'll feel a lot better. And uh, we'll salvage this night. All right, let me get back to dinner. Let's pour it out, cold beer. Tents up, sun setting. And the campfire's lit. This has actually turned into a nice evening. It's gonna be all right. Tomorrow's uh, winds that'll let me get back to where I came from. Thought about going south. If I sit, go south another day. The next day is winds right up my nose. I don't have all my sails. And the boat's limping. I don't know what else got hurt, so. I'll probably play it safe tomorrow. And headed back for Port O'Connor, although I'm not always known for doing what's safe or make sense, but uh, right now, I'm going to kick back here, catch a buzz, enjoy this sunset, enjoy this campfire, enjoy this port. So the next morning, upon inspection of the boat, I found that both sails were shot and a cross beam going to the outrigger float was bent after being pushed up on the bank. I had plenty of fuel to make it home, so I decided the best, the best decision was to head it back for the boat ramp, get it on the trailer, lick my wounds, and head it home. So a little less than four hours on the motor, I was safe and sound back in Port O'Connor. All right, five days of Texas 200 turned into one night, one day, well, two days getting back. That storm wiped out both sails. I considered his motor into Army Hole for a night. I thought I've banged up my boat pretty good, get it on the trailer, get her home. I'm exhausted, I'm hurt. And uh, we'll get a good video out of it, I know that. I'd love to get the whole run in, but with no sails. You know, and the winds are going to be really bad out of the uh, north, right off our nose. It'll all be motor. I did the wise thing, played it safe, pulled her out. But uh, it was a hell of an adventure. Some more adventures coming. Hit that thumbs up. It helps me out. I keep track of it. Put a comment in there. I answer the comments, read them all. Jump in there for, uh, you know, follow me. Be on the next adventure. Maybe exhausted right now, but I'm going to take you bastards sailing.